Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, for quite a few years I've used one of these DeWalt multi-tools and um, they've worked just fine. I, I did get one to the point where the triggers were sticking on it quite a bit because it has this rocking trigger thing on it. And this one is only about a month old. It actually has the three speeds down here and all that stuff. But it has so much vibration. That's literally my main complaint with these. The blade change is great, all that, but the vibration on these DeWalt's is just incredible. So, now I don't know if I can improve that by very much, and I haven't mentioned that I was going to buy this on the channel, but guess what came today? And yes, I haven't even opened the box yet. I grabbed this right off my porch. I think I know what's in it because it says Beaver Industrial Supply on the end. No discount on this. This is bought with my own money, obviously. And uh, they don't even know I'm doing a video about it. Okay. I'm really curious how these stack up against each other. Wow, they pack this up real nice. But I, did, I buy a lot of my Fest tools from... Uh, both Toolnut and Beaver Industrial Supply, which is festoolsonline.com. And uh, anyway, they've both been really good companies for me, honestly. I haven't had a bad service from either one. But here's what I got today. There's our nice letter, catalog, our packing list. A couple of Festool t-shirts. Now this is because I have more tools coming. They give... Beaver Industrial sends you a free Festool shirt with every Festool purchase or a hat. You can have your choice, but I am so rough on hats. They just get sweated through and they're just no good anymore. So I usually go for shirts and uh, we've got a pretty good pile of these by now. Anyway, I was really wondering if since the real release date for all this stuff is July the 1st, if they'd send me the new sustainer with this with this tool, and it, they did. This is the new style Festool sustainer, and I've not even had the opportunity to hold one yet. So this is a first for me. This is the the new one. I'm not sure if it had already come out then or what, but I didn't expect it necessarily to be with this since somehow I got it before July 1st. But the handles on these, actually hear that? They snap down in where, let's see, let's grab Let's grab a regular T-Lock sustainer here, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. The difference being, here is, here's a Carvex sustainer. Anyway, see? The handles just swing. This one apparently snaps in. Not only that, the handle flips the opposite direction now. This comes up, and, and this one goes back. So, they're both facing the same way for you there, and that's what they look like. But that's not where the differences really end on these. These don't have any lock point here. It looks like these honestly have some form of a locking point right here where you could snap some kind of a lock in there for what good that would do, I don't know. But now they also have a suitcase carry handle. I have heard on the sustainers that are smaller than this, which I believe is a SIS 2, and this is a SIS 1. I believe on the anything smaller than a SIS 2, which would be this, the handles actually have to stick out while they're stacked, and I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. But this is the new sustainer. Obviously, it even has it right there on the front. New sustainer. Check it out. So that handle snaps into place too, which is nice. So you won't have this hopefully rattling in the truck, having a front handle on it that way. All right. Shall we see what's in here? I think you all already have a good idea, huh? Yep, that's right. This is the new OSC-18, which is Festool's oscillating tool. And this is what it looks like. I was really curious, right next to the DeWalt, how it would look. I'll go ahead and pop the battery off the DeWalt. And you can kind of see how the two look there. Anyway, that is really cool. Now the DeWalt has the blade change here that is very hard to improve on. You just pull in and you take your blades off and you put them back on the same kind of a way. Where the Festool, you actually have to bring this all the way forward 
and then back, I believe, and then you should be able to snap a blade on. Now, I did buy the set here. I didn't get the one with the batteries and charger because I already have, I have another tool coming that I went ahead and bought the batteries and charger with. So let's see how these blades go on the Fest tool. I think they're going to just snap in there, but I could not say for sure. Yeah, there it is. Just press it in. And they have some kind of a wax on the end of their blades. They ought to. They're pretty proud of those, I believe. So I do have, went ahead and brought an 18, a 5 amp hour with me, so I could see how this is going to look. So there's the oscillator with that on it. And this is a little different in that it doesn't have the variable speed trigger like the DeWalt, and you just turn it on. Okay, vibration-wise, I wanted to see if there was any way I could show you guys the difference. I'm not really sure, and I can't. There's just the festival running right there. And that is on two. Obviously, It actually seems to smooth out a little more as it reaches full speed. I'm not sure if that's a real thing or what, but that is the new OSC 18. I did get the set here, so I have, they sent me, you know, of course, a few blades with it. I think just these three right here, the one I put on in those. So that's what you get with that. And this is the 599 set so this is what you get for the 599 and of course the the depth stop and every or the uh, dust collecting plunge base which is kind of cool actually i was not sure if these blades are the ones that work with this or not let's see there supposedly there is an arrow on this and you line up with that arrow to put this in let's see there it is. And then we should be able, well, okay, there we go. You gotta press the little green deal on the front. All right. And then you have that magnet there for it to ride on. So if you kick this on, let's go ahead and turn it down so we don't get quite so loud. If it even makes a difference. And now you can plunge across this magnetic base. You can plunge across this magnetic base and this magnet here keeps everything in line as you plunge, so you don't have your blade wandering this direction at all. And of course, now that we have this set up like this, you have dust collection that you can just attach right here. And you actually have a dust collector on an oscillating tool. Now that may seem like something that maybe you don't think you'd use that much, but as much as I use an oscillator, I run into occasions sometimes where I'm actually coming into someone's home and have to cut a hole in for some new little fixture or whatever, and I'm in a completely finished house over carpet, whatnot. And of course, putting down your, your tarps and everything, you wanna do that as well, but having the ability to connect dust extraction, and of course it's here, and then they have the little piece that you can put on without having this set up, hooked up. So we can re-disconnect this here. Let's see, we get it back to that. There, Ooh, comes right off, no problem. So you also have this one that you can put on, and I see an arrow on it as well, so I would assume as long as you line that up, you're gonna be just fine. Right here, yeah. So we can get rotated around to our spot and pop our dust collection in. Let's go exactly one way. Well, I'm going to get in a hurry and not get it right. But I can see where it's got to be all the way back to the arrow. There we go. So, and that dust collection, let's see if we can't get just a little closer to you guys here. Turn this a little bit. The dust collection here, your hose, of course, goes here, and it does have the new locking connector. And all you have to do is press this button in here on the front and you can rotate that in and it snaps 
you can hear that. It'll snap in in a lot of different positions, even all the way up to there. I think that would be it though, because that's the end of your setup. You could have your hose coming in directly from the side, you know, if you're plunging into a floor or something, or you can have it coming in directly down the side of the tool like that if you wanted to. And it actually has the extraction port right here. So that is really nice. You can get that right over your blade and you're actually having your suction come in from right here while you're cutting. So really neat features right there with this tool over the DeWalt. Uh, you know, a lot of times with Festool, it is about the accessories that they give you with these. Well, they don't give you anything, but you know what I mean. Uh, so with this one, I've got the plunge base, the dust extraction, of course, on the plunge base and individual dust extraction, as well as they give you a depth stop shoe, where if you're plunging with this, you can set a depth stop here to stop you as you go into the wall like if you want to make sure you're not going to plunge through you know how thick your sheetrock is just set this shoe to that depth and it will slide along it actually has little tapers on both ends so if you're running with one of the rounded end blades you could just move it along as you go and that would work out just fine that way I did have one thing I wanted to show I know a lot of people with these oscillators are buying these blades off of Amazon and using them and I myself am curious how they work out on a Festool if they'll even go on I do not believe that they will I run these on my DeWalt I do plan on keeping my DeWalt but it's going to turn more into one that my helpers can use and of course with these they're constantly running blades into things that you probably wouldn't with a nicer setup so I do not believe this will work but we will we will go ahead and try it right here so you will have seen it attempted. Let's see how this goes releasing a blade. Oh, look at there. Don't even have to touch the blade. That's fantastic. Okay, now you can see that these blades are just plain not even going to be compatible whatsoever. So you're going to have to go with the blades that are made for, like, I believe the Fine Supercut. They're brand new ones, will all fit. The, the Starlock Max blades are what these are, if you're looking for some. So, they'll snap right in, of course, if you have a, the Starlock, and you're done just like that. That's, of course, a shorter one. And then you have to have a longer blade to operate the plunge base, because it has to reach past the end of the plunge base. But they have the shoe that rides against the wall, as well as this little uh, stop here, that locks on the same way that other stuff was where you look for the arrow on here and line it up and move it in and you can use this one now let's get that on there if possible there we go yeah that's why I don't usually open these things up on camera I like to play with them a little bit first but you have this depth stop here where you have a little green button. Always the little green button does something with Festool. Press it in and you can adjust how far out you want your stop to be. Then when you get it where you want, you can set that stop point and it has positive lock everywhere around it. So you could set that to cut to a depth anywhere around the blade that you wanted. You know, if you're going into a tight spot or if you're trying to follow a piece of trim that's maybe over here, maybe up here, you don't want to cut beyond when you're cutting down here, you have a lot of options with this plunge, especially that one. And then, of course, the shoe would come in really handy as well. It looks to me like all you do is take that off. The shoe is going to drop right in the exact same spot. And when you swap these, now your shoe will come out there just like that, and you have a nice depth stop along the wall. So if you were wanting to, say, ride one of these blades down the wall, looks to me like you could probably get your blade over like so and then set your shoe right in here and you would be able to ride along and make a cut in sheetrock or something and it would, it would work out perfectly in a setup like that. But this has, this is a tool that, Originally, I never realized I needed one of these 
when I bought my first DeWalt one. And I bought this because I had a specific need. Undercutting door jams, you know. Other than buying a flush cut saw or something, you know, a toe kick saw, it's a little difficult to do that sort of project. So you run into that every day in construction. So bought one of these, used it. And then, of course, the problem became how expensive blades were. But now I will be able to have a nice option. And I've seen this done. I want to see if you actually can pick these blades up right off the right off a table. I have not tried that. You can. You don't even have to touch a blade to, to load it onto the tool. That is cool. But I really think I like the switch version better than the tr variable speed trigger. Because most of the time when you're running this, you need to you're gonna you're gonna have this nice little roller is literally right under your thumb where you're holding it on the barrel, so you can speed it up and slow it down. But it's not going to be cutting in and out. Hopefully by having this switch, where a lot of times after you've cut a sufficient amount of sheetrock with one of these, they the switches just get glitchy, glitchy, glitchy all the time. That's the only issue I've really had with this tool is the amount of glitching that it has. So. Really looking forward to this. This is the Festool OSC18. And uh, there it is, right up close. So you have a lot of good options. I'm gonna do some more videos with this, most likely on the job site, or even right here, doing some cutting and stuff, but I think this video is plenty long. This is the whole new setup. So we do have some, some more Festools coming this next week, hopefully with the new release. So we can do some more videos of things coming in also from Beaver Industrial. But that is the Vecturo, and thank you guys for watching. I want to make sure I did say that right. This is Starlock Max. It says this right here on the, on the clamp. So that's the kind of blades you'll have to have for this. I'm going to go try to pick up some fine blades for it tomorrow because I've heard some really good things about them, and I can actually pick them up in, in the city. So Anyway, thank you all for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment down below on what kind of oscillating tools you're using. I know the fines are really popular, and I would go with a fine, but that's an entirely new platform of batteries for me again, and I do not want a corded tool, really. So I'm going to have to go with the Vecturo for now and see how it performs for me. But let me know down below how yours is doing or what you're using and how they've held up. This is my second DeWalt in the last, I don't know, eight years or so. And I don't think that's too bad really for a DeWalt. So thank you all for being here. We'll see you on the next one.